Worthington, Iowa is probably about as far from the Hollywood fast track as you can get. But here on the main drag in the town hall, which doubles as the fire station, Hollywood has come. This is Command Central. Worthington, Iowa is probably about as far from the Hollywood fast track as you can get. But here on the main drag in the town hall, which doubles as the fire station, Hollywood has come. This is command central for the filming of the Richard Gere movie, Farm of the Year. Gear is nowhere in sight, but 200 extras are getting suited up for their shot at stardom. It's New York costume designer Shea Cunliffe's challenge to convert this batch of farmers, insurance salesmen, and TV newsmen into convincing citizens from the 1950s. So what I'm really trying to do is recreate the photographs I've looked at and make my scene look as close as possible to what it looked like then. Shea has gathered thousands of clothing artifacts from antique stores, theaters, attics, and rummage sales. Her cosmetologists have even studied the close crop hairstyles of the times and learned that to make me look like an eager young reporter covering the 1959 Iowa visit of Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev, my treasured mustache had to go. We try to uh encourage people not to get freaked out by the differences in the clothing and just to kind of look at it as an adventure, historical adventure. Okay, so Hopefully not a hysterical adventure. <laughs> but <laughs> Shay and Aaron are very proud of their profession, but admit that unlike the actors they serve, their best work is rarely noticed. Yes, I think if you notice the costumes, you've done something wrong, unless it's a character who's meant to look outrageous. So you're most no. happy when people don't notice your work? I'm afraid so, yes. The transformation can be amazing, but doesn't this guy look just a little bit like Pee Wee Herman? <laughs> They're miles from Hollywood anyway. Screen heartthrob Richard Gere and Kevin Anderson play modern-day rebel farmers about to lose the whole works. The gripper here is that they're about to lose the farm of the year, the model farm their father brought to the world's attention in the 1950s when he welcomed Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. Hundreds of Iowans filled in the extra roles over eight weeks of filming, including a starstruck newsman who sacrificed a prized mustache for a chance at a few seconds of celluloid fame. Big stuff in the tiny town of Worthington. See? As for the glamour, we 1950s scene setters did meet Brian Dennehy, but never even saw Richard Gere. We got herded into a cattle lot while waiting for the cameras to roll got an average of 35 bucks and a free haircut for a 14-hour day, a day to time travel back into a suit of granddad's old clothes. And we do about anything for another chance. Even if we end up on the cutting room floor, Iowa still wins. Three to five million dollars was spent here. They'll buy lumber, they um, buy things for costumes, they buy paint, they stay in motels, they eat food. Uh, they need transportation help. They hire local people, so it provides jobs. So um, it's hard to even estimate all the various areas the money is used. And each film seems to draw another once Hollywood discovers all Iowa has to offer. So to the future of Iowa film, a toast. This next round is on me! Look at all those extras. We may all get a chance if this keeps up. Dennis Dota, 5 TV News. A packed house greeted the arrival of this Iowa epic. The colas and the popcorn were flowing freely, and the parking lot was awash in rolling limousines. Class was everywhere. They had come from miles around to see miles from home. This was a black tie affair. It was a brash bash to celebrate Iowa's promise as a filmmaker's mecca, and the big spenders had spared no expense. The cinematography is wonderful. It depicts what Iowa is all about, um, the attitudes of the boys, you know, to want it, to keep their farm going, um, a lot of different aspects. 
Cedar Rapids movie critic Deanne Rex wrote, felt the same way. Even if the movie isn't a blockbuster, Iowa still gets rave reviews for its part. Well, I liked it. Um, it wasn't the best thing I've ever seen, but I, I really liked the way that it portrayed Iowa and the Iowa farmer. So the anxious crowd finally gets to see what they've been waiting for. Uh, hold it. Stop the projector. Excuse me, folks, but let me give you an idea of what it's like to be an extra in a movie like this. You've got hundreds of people trying to spot their face in a crowd. Well, there's mine right there. The fruits of my labor, a few frames that look just like that. Someone suggested my acting career may just be a flash frame in the pan. But not so for this guy right here. Look at this. Nikita Khrushchev, alias Larry Poling, a state center insurance salesman. Not bad. Uh, I was impressed with the movie. I thought it told a story that needed to be told. You look like an actor, though, who had done this before. Never. <laughs> You're your toughest critic, I think, Larry. I think so. And it doesn't matter to the Iowa extras if they're only spotted on the screen for a second or two behind the big stars because the proud smiles they left with last night showed they know star quality isn't measured with a stopwatch. <laughs>